Talking Tolkien Podcast, Episode 9, The Silmarillion, Chapter 4, of Thingol and Melian. Hi everyone, John Carswell here. Welcome to the Talking Tolkien Podcast, your conversational guide to Middle-earth and the works of J.R.R. Tolkien. On this episode of the podcast, we resume our discussion of the Silmarillion with Chapter 4, wherein Elway, King of the Teleri, meets the beautiful Melian in Middle-earth and misses the boat to Valinor. Though brief, this is an important account of a very pivotal moment in the history of Middle-earth. Enjoy! All right. Hi everyone, welcome to Talking Tolkien. Uh, your conversational guide to Middle Earth. So here we are on episode nine, which is um, concerning chapter four of the Silmarillion, which is, I think, maybe the shortest chapter in the whole Silmarillion. Yeah, it's pretty uh, short. So this may be, depending on how many rabbit trails and detours we get, <laughs> uh, black holes we get sucked down, uh, this may be the shortest podcast we've done yet, and the shortest mm-hmm. podcast in this series. Um. Of Thingol and Melian. So, um, Melian. Yeah, I don't know if there's an official pronunciation of her name. Sometimes I would have called it Melian, or Melian, but I think it's more like Melian. What do you think? Um, I would probably say it Melian. Yeah. Um, I think Melian I'm... sounds a little too, like, southern. Yeah, it does. It's not, yeah. It sounds a, not quite... Tolkien-ish yeah. enough. Like, it sounds like it needs to be softer and yeah. more Elion. fancy. Yeah, Melian. Yeah. Yeah. Like, the A feels like it needs to be pronounced more, yeah. Right, yeah. Melian. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you read my book yet, Greta? Not yet. Well, you're going to want to after you read this chapter, after we discuss this chapter. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I've wanted to. It hasn't been a question of want. <laughs> Let me just get that out there. Just been a time issue. Yeah. But you're right. I need to have my priorities in order. So, um, I will see what I can do. Good. Yeah. Maybe I'll at least, I'll start it by the time we do our next one so I can at least say, I started it. Mm Mm-hmm. Good. That'd be good. That would be good. That would be excellent. Um, all right. So, I made... A to- topical Tolkien haiku, and I know you didn't. I didn't, because you didn't remind me. But I made two. Um, so I can claim one as my own, whichever one I think is better. Yeah, the second one, I'm not sure if I even like it, but I'll go ahead and throw it out there. <laughs> um, the first one, I kind of like. I'm actually, Let me just say, I'm very impressed that you came up with two haikus for such a short chapter. I could have come up with more. Give me, enough, give me enough time. Yeah, I don't doubt that. Okay. Um, yeah, like I said, I, I'm really liking the haiku as a mate, you know, because... Obviously, haiku probably was. I don't know if Tolkien ever wrote a haiku, but uh, they're just kind of fun to write because they're they're not, you know, you know, they don't take you forever. Right. Um, there's probably like haiku people out there. They're like, well, a good haiku should take you three years to write. It's like, <laughs> it's like no, um, you know, and, and I'm sure you know masters of haiku would laugh at my haikus, but uh, I'm having fun writing them. I think they're a great intro yeah. to the chapter. I so here's they're... here's the first one for this chapter. All right. Hello, Melian. You look quite lovely today, except it is night. <laughs> 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 oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. Not what I was expecting. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. That's that's the nature of haiku. Yeah. So. I think. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I can't really say what the did, nature did of haiku is. Did you take a course in haikus? No. Like, okay. Because no. you're talking like maybe you did. I, I read a Wikipedia article on it. There you go. <laughs> hey, you know more That's about pretty much as good then. as taking a course. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and then the second one, yeah, this... Eh, I don't even know if I'm going to read it. I'll go ahead and read it. Um, I, I, I can't remember if actually this is complete, but we'll do it. Um, so, Grey Mantle... What song did you hear in her voice? A song of rebirth. Grey Mantle. I know Grey Mantle's in here, but I can't remember. Oh, got it. Okay. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, that one's kind of lame. I'm not going to lie. I like the first one better. I claim the first one. <laughs> Put my name on that one. Oh, well. All right. Whatever. Well, you did color my perception of the second one, to be fair. I did. Mm-hmm. You could have been a little nicer about it, though. A little more reassuring. It was just kind of lame. It wasn't, like, totally lame. Yeah, well, considering, considering, you, considering you didn't even show up with any haikus. Mm-hmm. Somebody forgot to remind me. Well, do I have to remind I'm you I'm going to set a reminder on my phone now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Make haiku. Make haiku. <laughs> right haiku. That's right. Priority. Highest possible. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. All right. Melian. Yeah, what did you think about this chapter? Um, you know, to be quite honest, I... You didn't read it? No, I did read it, actually. I did (laughs) read it. I thought you were going to say, to be quite honest, I didn't read it. (laughs) (laughs) That would have been bad. (laughs) Well... You know, to be quite honest, I didn't read it. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't want to disappoint I'm trying to read it right now as we're talking, and I'm only on the third line of the first paragraph. (laughs) I had to read it four times, I kept getting distracted by your haikus. That's right. Um, what I was going to say was that I didn't quite understand it. Mm-hmm. And it was a bit of a letdown, especially after the last chapter, because I really enjoyed the last chapter, and I was like, yes, I finally got this stuff. Like, I finally hit my groove, you know, like, I'm in the zone, I understand what's going on, I, you know, I don't need to reference the index as much, and, you know, I can follow this, mm-hmm. right? And it's, it's starting to come together. You know, puzzles starting to, you know, start to come together a little bit for me. And then I get to this chapter four, and I'm like, huh? What? Like, okay, like, elves, like, elves and this, you know, Maya and whatever, however you say it. Um, I didn't understand, I, I didn't quite get what was going on. Like, I do understand that, um, you know, I understand a bit. Mm-hmm. About what happened, but I guess I just don't understand kind of the the hows, the whys, the the intimate details. I guess. Yeah. You know well, saying? like I understand the general theme, but I'm trying to figure out how it fits into the puzzle, and that's what's mm-hmm. kind of making my brain hurt. Well, I mean, it is kind of abrupt. <laughs> it is, you know, it it is kind of an interjection. I, I, I think it's a little bit like the Ale and Yavana chapter where. You know, it, it focuses in on, on two specific figures. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Um, but and and this is a little bit more stage setting, but it's important because of um, because of what's going to follow. Um, so you know, Maya. You know who the Maya are. I know who the Maya are. are. Yeah, they're like yeah. lesser Valar. Right, right? the lesser lesser yeah. Valar. Um, mm-hmm. And Melian, of course, was mentioned in Valaquenta. Remember? Right, I remember. Yeah, yeah. she's she's um, Yavanna's or Var- Varda's. Uh, I think she's, she's one of their handmaids, right? Yeah, she dwelt in the gardens of Lorien, and I think she was the handmaid of like the two. Less... Oh, she's Yana. Yeah. I mean, sorry, Vanna. Right. Vanna and Estes helper. Yana. Yana. Yana, yeah. the one who's always tired. Yeah. Yes, that one. Um, she needs help. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a good thing she has Melian. Yeah. So she's like a handmaid. Right. Right, and she's uh, the one that loves trees and birds, and she teaches the nightingales how to sing. Yeah, and it's important to note that it says she was a kin <laughs> before the world was made to Yavanna herself. So she's kind of like a little sister oh, to Yavanna. Sister to Yavanna. I um, see. Okay. So she likes all these things. So that means she goes wandering. You know, she doesn't just hang out in Valinor. Because Yavanna wanders. Right. Yeah. Um. She departed from Valinor and came to the Hitherlands, and there she filled. Um, she filled the silence of Middle Earth before the dawn with her voice and the voice of her birds, and she's her birds are nightingales. Right, right. Mm-hmm. So she's like Yavanna, but a little more of the dark. Right, she's a little, she's a little bit of a darker figure. Okay, you know, likes the night. Okay. Um. Uh, and then that's that's just a little introduction to Melian, mm-hmm. and we pick up where the last chapter left off, which is the Teleri. Hanging out in Beleriand, right? Right. Um, so they started the journey west. Right. And remember, who was their leader? The, the Teleri's leader was Elway. Elway. Yeah. Right. And his brother, Ol- Olway. 
Olway. Because they yeah. were such a wise But Elway, family. remember, was the one who went to Valinor, right? Elway went was one of the three who went to Valinor. Right, and, yes. And so he, an he's one of the three that yeah. saw the light of the two trees initially. Right. Um, so in that way, he's greater than Elway, than Olway, his brother. I right? see, I see, gotcha. Um, okay. And... Uh, and so Elway likes going wandering through the woods to find his buddy Fenway. Fenway and Elway are good friends. And Fenway is the guy that's um, the Noldor. Yeah, he's the high king of the Noldor. Yeah, okay. That's right. Um, and so he's wandering through the woods, um, and then suddenly he hears the song of nightingales. Right. And there's Melian and her, her birds are singing. Mm-hmm. And it says, enchantment fell on him. Yes. And so, did you pick up on how long he was asleep? A long time. Yeah, like a really long time. Yeah, I went back. I think I read that a few times. Or like, asleep right? enchantment. Yeah, he was he was enchanted for a really it's long kind of time. Kind of like in a trance, basically, right? Yeah. Because um, it says that um, that there was uh, like lots of stuff happened, right, while he was right. So this in the they stood thus, and he so he sees Melian, and they're kind of in a trance together. Mm-hmm. Um, so that they stood thus while long years were measured by the wheeling stars above them. Right. And the trees of non Elmoth Elmoth grew tall and dark before right. they spoke any word. Yep. Um so it's like this moment again, this des- this moment of destiny and um the trees, you know, the trees grow around them before they even speak a word to each other. Right. So all this time the rest of the Teleri are like, uh they might know what happened to Elway. <laughs> yeah, right. He's kind of been gone a while. Yeah, he's our king, like, isn't he? Uh, Shouldn't he go years? with us? You know. Yeah. Uh, and again, you have to remember that Tolkien is is in this little subplot is skipping ahead right. a long way, where the Teleri actually do finally get there. They actually make it over. Right. Um, and but while he's in this trance, he hasn't actually seen Melian. Right. He's just heard her voice. Right. Right. Kind of like the sirens. Kind of like uh, Odyssey. Yeah, but I think Melian's a good siren. Yeah. Um, he, she's not. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's different. But when I hear, when I think of that, I think of something like the sirens. Um. So we got. Like I said, this is a short chapter. There's not much left to discuss. Um. I want to pause there, get a quick commercial break in. Okay. And um, and then we'll we'll come back and finish this up. Um. So, we'll be right back. Do you know the tale that Tolkien called the Colonel of the Middle-Earth mythology? Baron and Luthien is the story of an outlaw mortal and an elvish princess tasked with obtaining a Silmaril, one of the holy jewels of the Blessed Realm, from the Iron Crown of the Dark Lord Morgoth. In my new book, Tolkien's Requiem, I explore the legend of these doomed lovers. In doing so, I aim to provide a backdoor into the world of the Silmarillion for those who have struggled to give it a go. One of Tolkien's greatest achievements, the story of Baron and Luthien, deserves to be as well known as The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. Get your copy of Tolkien's Requiem today by visiting truemyths.org slash baron. That's truemyths.org slash b-e-r-e-n. Happy reading! Okay, we're back. Um, So we left off talking about uh, the really, really, really long time that um, Elway and Melian um, hung out just kind of like looking at each other. And then the Teleri got tired of looking for Elway and just decided, figured he was lost yeah. and decided to move on to Valinor without him, right. um, which we'll come to more about that in the next chapter. Um, but I wanted to pause on um, on that term enchantment. Mm-hmm. Um this this is a significant term for um for Tolkien. Um he doesn't I mean you know I, I'm not arguing necessarily that he means a ton by it here but he uses that term several times here. And the reason it's an important term is because in on fairy stories he talks and which is a very foundational meta Tolkien work. You know, it's kind of where he lays out his own literary yeah. views. Right. Um he talks about one of the critical aspects of good Fantasy of good fairy tales um, is that they have an enchanting effect. That a good fairy tale, unlike a bad fairy tale or other forms of storytelling, has the ability to make one get lost in a secondary reality that's been created. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. They don't just 
a person doesn't just look at it and like suspend disbelief so that they can enjoy something for a little while. Like they literally read something and and they almost feel like they're drawn into that world. Transported. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and for me, that's like exactly what it's like to read Tolkien. Mm-hmm. That's what I love about Tolkien. Mm-hmm. You know, is you know you read the Lord of the Rings and you just feel like you're transported into this yep. into this other reality. Yeah. Um, not many writers do that very effectively, but Tolkien is one of them, and, and he identified that. I so I think it's very interesting that he uses this term enchantment to describe Elway mm. with Melian and why Elway gets lost. It's like. Elway, you know, it's almost like Elway gets, finds all of this depth in Melian and he just can't extract himself from it. It's like, it's like finding a good book and just being, you know, you know, we've all had those moments when we find a book that we really like and we start reading it and then we're like, we can't put it down. And we mm-hmm. like spend the next couple of days just reading it. Yeah. And people are like, you, you need, you have, you know, you have other responsibilities you need to take yeah. care of. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know. Like and, when I was into the Hunger Games. Yeah. And you had to come remind me that I had to feed the children. And, yeah. You know. Which I still don't understand because I haven't made it all the way through the third <laughs> Hunger Games yet. <laughs> I'm just like, all right, whatever. This yeah, is all right. No, that was That was intense for me. But, yeah, yeah and it, it's interesting, too. I was, it's a, that's a really – I like that point that you brought up. Because um, it's almost like um, Elway wasn't just standing there. Like, even though we – you know, if we were to see him mm-hmm. – that's what it would look like that he was just standing there but he must like you know i mean he was obviously somewhere else in his mind right yeah. i mean he had to be occupied because nobody if, they, if he was truly just standing there i mean that just you know why that right doesn't make any sense to stand somewhere for years and years mm-hmm. you know i mean there had to be much more going on um but I think I asked you this before. He hasn't actually seen Melian at this point, has he? I thought he just heard her voice. Um, well, he he hears her voice, and that draws that draws him to her. And then she sees him, and it says, She spoke no word, but being filled with love, Elway came to her and took her hand, and straightway a spell was laid on him. So that they stood this, thus while long years were measured by the wheeling stars above them. Oh, and yeah. so we go from an enchantment to a spell. Well, yeah, and I don't know if those are necessarily separate ideas. Um, I mean, you think an enchantment could be a spell. I see. Okay, so Um, enchantment draws him to her. mm -hmm. And once they touch, once their hands, um, once he takes her hand, that's when when the the trance. Yeah, and and, you know, it's important that, you know, it's important too to make the distinction between magic and and enchantment, I think, because again, one of the one of the themes remember we talked about was you know the three key themes fall mortality in the machine and the other term for machine for Tolkien was magic right, right. magic is like this counterfeit enchantment yeah <clears throat> um, it's this attempt to actually sidestep true like true beauty and true skill and all these kinds of things and just like pump out um, pump out faux enchantments right 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 um, Whereas true enchantment is is has a real depth to it and, and is actually a getting lost you know getting lost in something right yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I don't know I, I mean I I think I think he's just I think Tolkien is just trying to say that Melian had this incredible depth I mean you think about it like that the fact that here Elway and Melian basically wind up together that's that's kind of crazy like you know here's this basically semi-divine figure it's it's like a human being marrying an angel or something like that you right. know yeah it's like a yeah it's a supernatural versus natural right i mean not that elves were natural. no you're right it is natural, supernatural but... elves were you know i mean <laughs> for one thing for for melian even though she had a physical appearance, a physical appearance is not part of her nature. Whereas for oh, true. for a child of a Lubitar, for an elf, it is part of their nature. Okay. Right? Yes, it really is um, a supernatural. You know, she was there in the mu- in the in the mm-hmm. music of the Ainur. She was in the halls of a Lubitar. You know. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, it's it's a pretty it's a pretty amazing thing that they, you know, that they wind up together. Um, 
and it the fact that they have offspring means that there is like divine blood like almost like this divine mm. dna introduced into the world you know interesting yeah wow um so crazy yeah anyway i i i really like that idea of enchantment and i feel like there's more there but i i just wanted to call out tolkien's concept from on fairy stories because i think that's i think something like that is what he's referring to here that that Melian's beauty was just so much that it enchanted. It, there was such depth to, to her beauty that it enchanted Elway. He just got lost. Like, yeah. He just was transported to a new reality. Almost. Right. Yeah. And, and it's just like that person getting lost in a book and being like, what happened to that person? They're reading mm-hmm. this book. You know, they've been reading it for the last couple of days. Right. You know? Just hold up in their room. Just, right. Yeah. Um, so all the while, Elway has to take the kingship of the Talarian to part because they can't wait around for Elway to... Um, to wake up. up. Right. Um, and then um, Elway never comes across the sea. He never, he never, he never comes back to Valinor. Valinor. Now, mm-hmm. he had been to the sea. He had been there already. So right. he is a Calaquindi. Right. Um, he is an elf of the light, but he never again comes back. Um, and it says, of, of Melian, there came among both elves and men a strain of the Ainur who were with, with, with the Luvatar. Before Aya. And uh, I'll just go ahead and say this. Um, you know, there's figures in Lord of the Rings who... Actually, several figures in Lord of the Rings who have... Who are descendants of Thingol and Melian. Right? Oh, okay. Um, that have this this strain of the Ainur within their own DNA, if you will. Okay. Um so that's that's something that's kind of interesting to note and something that's very important for understanding who like our leaders and that kind of thing within within the world of of Middle Earth. Um so Elway stays behind and he becomes um he becomes the king of the gray elves, the Sindar, the elves of the Twilights. Mm-hmm. These are like the last of the Teleri that didn't that didn't make the trip that stayed behind. They just couldn't bear to part with the beauty of Beleriion, so they decide to stay behind. In um, in Beleriand, instead of making the final trip over to Valinor, and oh, and okay. Elway becomes okay. their king when he shows back up again, and I so he's got a bunch see. more names. He he was Elway Signolo in the other chapter in chapter three, and um, which uh, Signolo means means gray mantle, which you know he's the king of the gray elves, so that makes sense, right? The Sendar, the Grey Elves. Oh, I see. And he's okay. also Elu, Elu Thingol. And so Thingol is the most mm. common name we're going to get to know him by. That was one of the things that really confused me. Yeah. Because there was like all these names and I'm like, wait, is that the same person yeah, remember, or Tolkien, different people? Tolkien likes or... to give things multiple names. I should have remembered that. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. And so, because he was a linguist and and he created all these different languages and he was like, well, in this right. language his name's this and in this language his name's this. Right. Um, so he's the king of the the Sindar, right? And they are, and they are, so they are not. Um, they don't actually make it into the light of the two trees. So they're called the elves of the twilight, which is kind of interesting because it's almost like they made it halfway, right? right. They're not in the dark. They're not in the light. Mm-hmm. They're the twilight, right? Um, <clears throat> and then. Um, and then it says his queen is Melion, so King Grey Mantle or Thingol. Right. Um, and then his queen is Melion. And um, is this Thousand Caves? Is that where they live? Or? Yeah, we'll find out more about that later on, where that okay. comes from. Um, okay. Yeah, they live in the land of Doriath, which is a little region within Beleriand. Oh, I see. And it's okay. kind of an enchanted region that Melion protects from other, like mm-hmm. she kind of casts a spell about it that keeps... Um, keeps it safe. Keeps it safe. Yeah, <laughs> and their 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 kingdom is called Menegroth, the Thousand Caves. Oh, okay. That. Okay. Um. Uh, and and so Melion lends a lot of power to Thingol, so he really becomes this great this great king within Beleriand. Mm. Um. And and the fact that he had seen the light of the two trees means that he's extra special amongst all these elves because he's the only one that's actually seen it. Right. Okay. Um. Uh, and then the final line, 
Very important. And of the love of Thingol and Melian, there came into the world the fairest of all the children of Iluvatar that was or shall ever be. Um, I don't know. Did I write that? Did I write a note about you who did. that is? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so I yeah. I would pick up on that otherwise. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. So it's, it's Luthien, um, who is their child. Uh, she doesn't come back into play for a while, but very important figure when you get to the chapter of mm-hmm. Baron and Luthien. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, and that in and of itself is, an, is another interesting marriage because it's going to be a marriage of a mortal and an immortal. Um, and so again, blending of um, you know, blending of two races right. that you know. Because Lucian separate. being a child of an elf and a Maya. Yeah. Am I saying that right? A Maya. Or yeah. A Maya. Um, mm-hmm. So she. So what does she consider? She's like basically a brand new race, right? I mean, are, are they kind of grouped in with the elves or the Valar or kind of what is their... Do you know what I'm asking? Like yeah. I know you said she's an immortal, which well, know, obviously she has characters. Yeah, I don't know. I never know quite how to refer to her. I, I usually just call her Elf Maiden, but... I see. Um, okay. Wait, I'm sorry. You're talking about Luthien? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then, I, I usually just refer to her. I, yeah. I usually just refer to her as Elf Maiden. Like, you okay. know, it's just awkward to say like Maya Elf or something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I don't know that Tolkien has a special reference to what her race is. Okay, that was my question. But yeah, I just kind of think of it as basically she's an elf with extra special powers. Okay. You know? she's an elf on steroids. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a really crass way to refer That'd to. That'd be a very crass way. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, it's basically an elf squared, maybe, or something. Like a, <laughs> elf squared. I'm doing a really bad job. I'm going to stop trying to... If you have your own this. own thoughts on how we might refer to Luthien. <laughs> yes, the please, race of help me. Yes. I feel like I need something to label her with. I mean, elf maiden is fine, but, I mean, what if there's boys? Right? What if there are male offspring of, of a, a Maya and an elf? Yeah, I don't know. You call them elf dudes? <laughs> Probably not. Probably not. No, See, definitely that's what I'm not. Saying. That's why we need like an all-encompassing, you know, name for their race. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised Tolkien doesn't have one. How about how about a how about a mouth? <laughs> <laughs> a mouth. That yeah, sounds good. Mouth. Yes. Or a uh, uh, a flam. I don't know. That's like mouth backwards flam. <laughs> oh my! We need to come up with a term for this. If you got your own terms you'd like to nominate for this, we're we're open to nominations. Yeah. So let us know. Um. Please. Yes. Yeah. Anything else? That was really short. Well, it's a short chapter. I know. I know. I'm just you know, I'm just saying it was short. No, you know. uh... I mean, I don't see a I don't see a reason to belabor the point. I think it's I think there's some important stuff in there, um, but a lot's going to ha- be happening in the next chapter. Sweet. And in the uh, next several chapters after that, um, you know. But actually, we're going to we're going to pause from our study of the Silmarillion for one episode, and we are going to read Leaf by Niggle. Oh, good. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, I love Leaf by Niggle, so I thought that would be a fun one to discuss. Um, I think we can get through it all in one episode, but it might take us two. Yeah, I think um, it'll probably take us two. But uh, my goal is one. And, um, yeah, Leaf by Niggle should be fun. That will be very fun. Oh, very, good. very fun. I'm excited to read that one again. Yeah, me too. All right, well, any other thoughts on Thingol and Milion? No, you helped uh, clear it up for me. Good. Thank you. Now that I know that that gray mantle and um, Thingol and LA are all the same people, I'll be able to sleep tonight. Good. Thank you for that. Well, that's good to hear. <laughs> all right. That was good. It's it's uh, again. It's you know. It's, it gets me excited about about uh, where we're headed. Be some pretty cool stuff. I mean, there's already been a lot of cool stuff happening, but. You know, there's been foreshadowing even with the, in the cool stuff, so it's mm-hmm. like, you know, I'm excited about. Uh, it's cool squared. It is cool squared. <laughs> yes, that's gonna be my new thing. I'm just gonna say something squared. Something squared. Something squared. Nice. Yeah. 
All right. Sound kind of smart at the same time, maybe. All righty. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye, y'all. Bye, bye. Please remember to check out TrueMyths.org for show notes as well as other Tolkien goodness. On the next podcast, we will take a look at Tolkien's short story *Leaf by Niggle*, one of his best non-Middle Earth works. It's a story every Tolkien fan should read, and one that really reveals the heart of the man. Be sure to tune in, and thanks for listening.